shall he love, and whoever loves and believes in me shall never die. Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Help us to love as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life, and strengthen this faith and hope in us all the days of our life. Through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
morning, everyone. We greet you in the wonderful and the blessed name of our dear Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is alive, he is risen, and he has set us free from sin. Before we start, I can just ask that everybody else besides the family remain standing. As we just ask um, Mr. Eric McPherson just to come up to just light his hand up. Grandfather, uncle to many, friend to everyone. Um, thank you, Father, for the great speech, soothing words. And I would like now to call Kaila for the obituary. Michael McPherson, a man of unwavering determination and resilience, passed away on September 13, 2023 in Bloemfontein Free State, leaving behind a legacy of hard work and devotion. Born in Hasekwati village, Lesotho, on the 6th of February, 1938, Michael embarked on a remarkable journey through life. He began his education at Misitaneng Primary and later attended Holy Cross High. After completing his schooling, he ventured to South Africa, working in the mines in Gauteng, where he rose to the position of capturer. Later, he made Bloemfontein his home, initially working as a gardener, gradually transitioning to become a contractor. His culinary talents shone when he took up the role of a chef at the Capitol Hotel. This was just one chapter of his diverse career as he eventually became a taxi owner and operator, a path not without its challenges, but one he persevered in. After seven attempts, he obtained his taxi permit. In 1961, Michael married his wife, his first wife, Humani Johanna McPherson, with whom he was blessed with four children. Tragedy struck when Humani passed away on 8th of August, 1983. Michael, a dedicated father, lived as a widower for 13 years, raising his children on his own while growing his business. In 1998, he married Bongiwe Maggie McPherson, with whom he had another child. Michael leaves behind his loving wife, Maggie, and his cherished children, Daniel, Aubrey, Eric, Joyce, and Michaela. In addition, he leaves behind 14 adoring grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. He has now joined one of his great-grandchildren in heaven. He was a tenacious man who never gave up, always striving for the best for his children and grandchildren. His life was a testament of his belief that when faced with obstacles, it's a part of life. Michael McPherson, indomitable spirit, and his love for his family will forever be remembered and cherished by all who knew him. Uh, with the rest of the service, can we all just stand to sing a song? Uh, Rock of Rangers. 
your blessed ear. It's your moment now. Kiala Boha. The first shutter. Maruti Baho Potileng Family Yer Michael Pachetrape. Ela sal sing di lieve han matlek bias for ela. Ek wil net e ela mot for ons mot for ons mot ons mot for dai for ela bird. Not only me, Miss Handel, Ellis of Pass of Putis, Miss for Miss Miss Cabray, Ella Mutnet, Dai Harder Work for Ellis of Pass, Moe Work, Ella Mutomni for Neely, Ella Mutomni for Warlos, Dai Mane Ed Cabret. So, Maggie Dazi Kenners, Michael Sekenners, and St. Clay Kenners. He is Maggie. And well, for you say, the year of the year, the year of the year, the year of the year, the year of the say, thank you that the program. Hey, for you, my Sutu people, I'll come and share what he was saying. <laughs> At this moment, I want to invite our uncle, Uncle Dan, it's your moment. Good morning, everyone. Dumela. Molo. Now I'm not at the level of Cyril Ramaphosa with all the greetings, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Pa, Pra Mike, Oom um Mike, Opa Mike, Lescoch. To you, I was your son, but also the father figure as you named me after your dad, Daniel David McPherson, Upadanki. What an awkward relationship we had at times. Because it's difficult to be a son and also to be respected as you are my father. The old man says, man, respect your father, Allah, to you. And that's how he treated me. And I think many would not understand or would not even comprehend the kind of relationship that we had. It looked strange, but it was true, honest. Whenever I would leave after visiting him, he will always remind me, you brought change in my life. Your visit, don't stop, keep on coming. I feel emotionally better, physically better, even if it was just for that moment when I was there, and chatting to him on the stoop sometimes, reading newspapers with him on Sundays at times. But you would tell me that all of a sudden he is at peace 
uh, for that moment. And being the firstborn, I was also tasked a lot, many a time, to go out where he could not and represent the family at family gatherings, whether it's a funeral or a wedding or whatever. But he would say, if you are there, then everyone would know that the McPherson's, him, Michael, is also present in his support to them. Where does one even start to acknowledge your presence, your contributions, your influence, your legacy? Indeed, you were our superhero, or should I say, our own Einstein. And there is no coincidence that you were staying in Einstein Street, because he was a clever guy. Or should I say our own Elon Musk, the pioneer, that would venture into strange places and areas and make a success out of it. But definitely not Tabo Bester. <laughs> you were creative in thought, words, and deed. A creative mind, not cunning, that would see opportunities and grab them with both hands. At a very, very young age, you armed yourself with a Bible and a small school bag filled to the brim with basic needs such as education and skills. And you decided to fearlessly conquer this world. You are a conqueror and not a survivor. The dangers of the Caledon River would not hold you back from attaining your success and prosperity. Poverty would not dictate to you your final destiny. You stood up and thought back for the sake of a better future for all. When life gave you lemons, you turned them into lemonade. As it was said earlier, from a miner in the East Rand underground and later promoted to a capturer, at the top, it just showed the bravery of that young man. It's not everyone that will go down three kilometers or two kilometers or one kilometer must down where it's very hot and at a young age be that brave to say, I'm going to start working because I'm looking for a better future. But he was also promoted because in those years they could easily pick up the talent that he could read and write. So he was educated. From that to a garden boy. When his sister called him to come to Bloemfontein, he came and came as a garden boy. From a garden boy, he became a kitchen boy where he was washing dishes as well. And it's in that very same kitchen that also they noticed his talents and eventually became a chef at that hotel, Capital Hotel, in Bloemfontein. Now, this is this strange relationship as well. Uh, he also, from a miner to a pirate. Now, a pirate are those people that go out to rob at sea. But I refer to that as a buccaneer as well, because there's a strange connection there, that he would go out and do his best transporting people after hours. So working at a hotel, saved some money, got some vehicles, whatever, and was able after hours to transport, early in the mornings, to 
transport staff people to their various workplaces without a taxi license. No? That's why I'm saying he was a pirate. Um, also, he died being that one. A pirate's friend. And the connection between that again, he was born in 1938. Pirates was established just a year earlier, in 1937. So there was a close relationship with the team that he was supporting. After that, as he was, he became a taxi driver and eventually he became a very successful taxi operator or taxi owner. As Nelson Mandela once said, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Brother Mike, Pa, you demonstrated that by continuously encouraging us, motivating us, and even bribing us with Christmas clothes, watches, Parker pen, a Parker pencil, bicycles, to say, if you pass and you pass well, this is what is waiting for you in December. And we became the best versions of ourselves because of you, Brother Mike. In remembrance of him, I'm just going to read quickly through a few things that were said as people were reflecting on his life. A friend said, Your pa had my university to go fat, or my loban to begin, and 60 years later, on 30 September 1928. Die dag waarop hij, waarop hij afgesterf had, heb ik uitgetreden uit mijn beroep als een advocaat. Een schoolvriend, ik was tot binnen in die huis gejaagd met een sambok, net omdat ons sokker in de straat gespeeld had. Zoals die kaar aangekomen het, die taxi aangekomen het, moest allemaal maar net pad gee. Vrienden in de straat, jouw pa was bij een kwaai, maar ook bij een nederige mens. En het nooit gebrek oor sy besittings nie. Ons was gereeld gevra om die teksies of die kare te was en ons het baie kere uitgesien om die 2 cente en cente en halwe cente op te tel wat op die vloere geleid binnen in die teksie in. Die bierman het gesê, direk oor kan die pad, as hy baie moeilik was, dan het hy altyd Klippe we mekaar gemaakt en gesê, hoe jy nou vir bra Mike nou gaan aanvat. Maar as my pa sy sambok gevat het en sy hek oop gemaakt het, dan het hy verdwijn terug in sy jaarten. Een politievriend wat achter die antlagkantoor aan die oor gegryp is en gesê, kom, ek het jou nou nodig. Staff members from the banks, Toyota, Mediclinic, they used also to say he was a very friendly person, very talkative. Ma work by a kwai. As a geld gaan bank het, was die geld gestrykt by die huis. En nou die note moet plak, die sal moet nie nog, die machine vat het moest nie. En as die dag gekom het en laat sikkel om, want hy gesê, nee, 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 kom, ek is nou hier, jylle moet my nou help. So he insisted on that. Those at a hospital, medical clinic as well, they would have it very tough many a time. Because on two occasions, he also managed to discharge himself. He would convince them he's ready to go home uh, without any papers. And there's also a picture where he was sitting at the door with his head, but he can't go out of the door because now uh, he wanted to go, but he was not discharged. 
but they enjoyed him and he kept on telling them it's my tax money that is paying your salary you better look after me uh, yeah and then we've got traffic cops that used to get a lot, gain a lot of uh, coke and a lot of kfc and in those years we didn't call it bribery because he would just pass on his way those would still remember those years there was a just opposite Ramkral, there was a tree, and there was a lot of traffic cops that usually would be standing under that tree. And when he goes in, he sees them. When he comes back, he stops and says, yes, a Coke for you. And uh, in that way, he never got traffic fines uh, because he made sure. Yeah, let me continue. You chose to wear different hats over your illustrious, uh, illustrious lifespan. As a father, as a grandfather, you were a loving father, grandfather, who cared deeply for all his children and grandchildren. However, your bond with your daughters, your granddaughters, was much more special. They could easily get away with money without asking for it. But your sons, we had to bring and explain our salary advice to you before you could give us anything. At times you left early in the mornings, or came late at night, or even spent weekends away from home. But we all knew that your coming home meant that we would be munching into a barrel of, 20, uh, uh, a barrel of KFC that has 21 pieces in it. We were then eating like kings and queens when they enjoyed their cheese and grapes and, and wine. We appreciate and honor you for spoiling us. As a mother, in the absence of our late mother, Mamu Sahumani Johanna, for 13 consecutive years, you provided for all your children's needs. You cooked for us and told us never to eat prepared of our food prepared in shops. Obviously, he knew he was once a chef. He knew that what happens behind a kitchen, a, a, a closed kitchen door. So he'd always say, eat a home-cooked meal. You made sure that our school activities were always done daily. Like a chicken hen, you would spread your wings to protect us when we were faced with dangers. Sometimes while reading newspapers on a Sunday, you would share some of your fears with me, being lonely for too long without a soulmate and what might happen after your death. As a philanthropist, one of eight siblings, you believed in caring for your brothers, your sisters, their children and grandchildren, as well as your in-laws. Their well-being, welfare was centered in your heart. You advised to care of many, including your own employees, drivers, where you, whom you advised with marital issues. You were the co-operators, you were there in protecting your roots. And in the community at large, one community member also said, he Ask for a regular uh, intake for a lift to town to go and buy a part for his taxi. And uh, as he was giving my father a lift, my father said to him in the car, I think it's time that you sell this car and buy yourself a minibus. Uh, and, uh, and he thought, no, 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 no. At that young age of mine, I was still looking for a wife who will be interested in me if I'm driving around with a kumbi and not driving around in a car. But that was advice that he shared uh, to many, and he said, get a combi and I will help you to get a license. As a provider, the taxi industry and community knew as a very stubborn person, but to us, you were a very sweet angel. You were willing to go the extra mile for your core family as well as your extended family. You tirelessly hustled from morning to evening uh, to build your own small empire. Many a time, when people were looking for trans transport, they also abused him, uh, not telling him for what the transport was, and he would, he would end up in jail or in a cell, and his best lawyer, Um Villa, would have to come and bail him out, out of that cell. When people were relying on cheap transport, buses and trains, you offered your own private intercape taxi services for long distances. The police har arrest you for owning vehicles as a black person, yet you persevered and overcame the odds. As a teacher, you instilled in us love, respect, dignity, discipline, fairness, compassion, humbleness, 
honesty, accountability, responsibility. Auntie Joyce and Joanne. Ke tlobua da batsa go. Eh. Memory, 
Fetla rinse re shebile nako. Ke tle ke fete ke Kibite anti Joyce Lejre. Good afternoon. Um, the last time I stood here was on the 12th of July, 1997, in this church when I got married to my husband and my father gave me away. And my in-laws are here as well. Um, and now I'm standing here again, I think after plus minus 26 years, for my father's funeral. On the 8th of August, 1983, my life changed. At the age of 12, I lost my mother and my world was turned upside down. However, I firmly believe that in times of darkness, God is our hope and our strength. God chose my father, Michael McPherson, to be the guiding light in our lives during those trying times. He possessed patience and strength that, needed, that was needed to raise his three sons and his only daughter at that time, before Michaela. There's always, there's so many verses in the Bible that starts with, but God. And this signifies the hope that emerges when we find ourselves facing challenging times. This morning, I want to stand here and express my gratitude to God for allowing my father to be Michael. My father, it was not an easy task to raise a daughter alone and three boys alone but my father had the patience he had the perseverance and he always always wanted the best for us we had many conversations when i would visit him and i would always say to him i'm not going to say thank you when you're no more there but I'm gonna say thank you whilst you're still alive. And Maggie knows that I would sit with him and say to him, thank you, I am who I am because of you. But I'm gonna mention three conversations that profoundly impacted my life as I'm standing here. The first one was when he said to me, Joyce, if school, your brothers are going to get married. They're going to start their own families. They will never be able to take care of you. And at that time, I didn't know I would find somebody to take care of me. <laughs> but, you know, I, was, I always tell people, it's like, you know, I changed a lot of... Um, uh, changed a lot. I did BA, I did radiography. But that day, when he said that to me, a light bulb opened, and a light bulb went on, and I said to myself, I'm going to study. And when I graduated, he was the happiest person. He said to me, I don't care who says what choice, because people believe that he might waste his money by taking me back to school, but he said, I'm going to give you another chance. And today, I stand here, with a thankful heart for my father believing in me. When I informed my father, when Hector's parents, Ma, she's here, came to ask for my hand in marriage, my father made a decision 
a decision that I'm also thankful for today. He said to me, Na kimusutu, you are not going to go, go to your marriage with your daughter. My father decided to raise my daughter Joanne as his own with Maggie. So once my fa we had our, my father was with my mother, he raised us up, and then my father had a yeah, few lives. He again had Maggie, where he raised Maggie, where Maggie and my father raised my daughter Joanne as his own with Michaela. My father loved Joanne as he loved all his grandkids. My father loved all of his grandchildren and always wanted the best for them. And as they all sit here, all of his grandkids, they should be thankful for having a grandfather that would take, take them to school and then would go fetch them as well. The last conversation that changed my life is when my father, we went to Redisburg to Maggie. And he said to me, Baby, you are not a trout. You are not a trout. I can not make Maggie trout. And I think that was a calculated decision that my father made. He understood that having two women in the same house might pose some challenges. And he never wanted to be in a position where he would choose between Maggie or myself or the other kids. And because of that decision that my father made, I have a beautiful, a wonderful relationship with Maggie, who became my mother, my sister. I don't know, she's everything to me. I can call upon her anytime. And I want to thank my father for making that decision to say, I'm going to wait 13 years, and then afterwards, I'm going to get married. Maggie, thank you for heeding the call to raise my child. I don't think you were given a choice. You were just told. But afterwards, I know that you were a mother to my daughter. But God is faithful. Myself and Joanne, we are both in Joburg now. <laughs> so we are very close as well. But besides raising Maggie, we found a home, not a house. When we go home, even the grandkids, they can tell you that Maggie has never been funny to them when they come to that home. Maggie will always make sure that there's a meal to eat, there is chocolate cake that she would bake for us. Even in my times when I would want to go home, Maggie was always there for me. Maggie, this is my father's day, but I want to tell you something, because the love that my father had for you and the love that you had for my father, I promise to be with you. I promise to always be there for you. I've seen how you've taken care of my father. I've seen the patience and the love you portrayed when you take, took care of my father. And I want to thank you, Maggie, for taking care of my father till his last days. I love you, Papa. I am who I am because of you. I have firm roots knowing that I was raised by someone who dearly, dearly loved me and all of his kids. In closing, I just want to say this. Based on 1 Corinthians 15, 52, Revelations 21, 4, we are reminded of a promise of a better future. And I hope one day, Papa, I will see you, my mother, and my grandchild in heaven. Amen.
I just want to share a few. Um, I just want to share a few words when it comes to my grandfather. Nothing can explain how my grandfather went beyond and above when it comes to raising me. My name is Joanne, and it's from my grandmother's name, Joanna. And when I discovered what the name actually means, it means God is gracious. And for a child that was born as a mistake, my, my grandfather saw the potential and saw me more than just a mistake. And with my grandfather in my, in, in my life. Like he went beyond. He treated me just like his, his own child. Whether it comes to schooling, education, everything, what he did for his children, he did for me. I called him Opa. I hear everyone is talking about Bra Mike, Bra Mike, but as grandkids, actually, we did get the privilege to call him Opa. But to me, he was not an Opa. To me, he was the only father I actually knew. And he, he always wanted the best for me, and that's why he is my father. And one thing is that, you know, like when, when, when families don't have a mother or have any guidance or any, anything like that, my, my grandfather also gave me a home. My grandfather gave me a family. My grandfather, like you guys don't understand, like my grandfather gave me a family. He gave me Kyla and Auntie Maggie and like my mother was like my sister and a few of my uncles are also like related to as on a brother level. So like he was, that's what my grandfather did for me. My grandfather went like small times, like when I was younger, like he would, when I get 60% for maths, he would actually go to school and tell her, no, you can drape maths, you know? And then the teachers would say, no, she's doing fine. And he's like, no, she's not doing fine. I will pay extra money for, uh, for extra maths because she needs to get 100%. So my grandfather used to do that because he was so smart. My grandfather taught me mathematics and geography like from a very young age. He just decided to go and take me to extra maths and all those lessons when he saw that I know he can't do it anymore. And he, he, he invested so much. Like when I went into varsity, he didn't want me to go to the University of Cape Town. We had an argument every single day of my life, you know. And finally, he... He allowed me to go and try to, to, to become an, a success. And even times where I, I missed out on the opportunity and I failed at the University of Cape Town, one thing my grandfather said to me is that no one is more invested in your success but yourself. The world doesn't really want to see you prosper. So I'm going to give you another opportunity. Take, put your shoes, pack your bags and go to Joburg and try to get an, into another varsity. And from there, I didn't look back. And like my uncle said, no one has really gone three kilometers below the ground in mining. But today, I'm in mining, and I'm three kilometers below the ground where it's hot. Um, but he, 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 my grandfather was also, we didn't really, as much as this is our church, we didn't really grow up in a very religious and tradition or cultural type of household, but my grandfather depended on principle above all things. When I had my first child, when I went home with my first child, my grandfather used to say, Nia, ekwarini fani rangni, ekwarini fani kuyini, I don't want any cows at my house. Khantiyakan ba home face. Like that was enough for my grandfather. <laughs> Like, that was enough for my grandfather. And, yeah, everything was just with ease when it came to him. Like, we could decide to be who we want to be and not be judged, you know. He's just, oh, he's just a remarkable man. Like, no one can, I can't express in this short time what this man has done for me. And he didn't have to. Like, he didn't have to at all. You know, sometimes we think, like, older people need to raise um, but he, he was not forced because if he was forced, he wouldn't go above and beyond, you know. Um, I, he always narrates to me one thing where he says, um, I had four kids before you, but the first person I changed the diaper is you. 
you know. <laughs> He'll always tell me that. And my grandfather loved me, and I really loved him as well. Like, yo, like, he's everything to me. Um, rest in peace, Opa. I hope that we will meet in eternity. I hope that it doesn't just end here in flesh. Because I believe that God created a spirit, a higher consciousness. And I believe that one day we will meet, you know. Thank you so much, Grandfather. Rest in peace. Kanetin that Tim Huloa strong. He raised everyone to the best of his ability. And a typical example with Joanne. You're strong, man. Three kilometers underground. You know I'm in mining industry, but I can't even go into the pit. But yeah, thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Auntie. Um, Michaela, would you want to say something? So for 26 years, every time I was asked, who's your role model? My answer has always been my dad. Because he is where I drew wisdom from. So every action, every consideration, and every decision I've ever made, even all my advice usually starts with, you know, my dad always sits. He sh my dad showed me how a husband should love his wife, he showed me how a man should love his daughter because all he ever wanted was to be a good dad. He wanted to be successful, but just so he could give us all the best life. While doing nothing for himself, he did everything for us. <laughs> and yes, I was named after my dad. But the problem was, my dad and I were exactly the same person. A big fighter and a little fighter. And also, he was born in 1938, and I was born in 1997. But he was malleable. He was the father that molded himself for me. And we were both stubborn, but he would hear me out. And he always trusted me, and he would always tell me that he loves me. And he always made me feel like I can be whoever I wanted to be and be my authentic self, just like he was always exactly who he was and said exactly how he felt. As long I was, as I was being my best self. Daddy, you said to mommy that you want to grow old by her side. And you told her that you want her to grow with you. And every day I would get a phone call of you telling me I need to finish school and I need to start working. And I'm happy your dreams came true. So now your mission is complete. Mission accomplished, and now you have to go. But you will always be my first love, and you and mommy will always be my first and closest friends. I'm so happy I got to spend every day with you in the ICU. I never expected to have you for as long as I did. But I'm forever grateful for every single moment. You're the best dad in the entire world. And I love you so much. Sorry, Kayla. Nagoya my. Uh, at this stage, we have two people. 
that Tim Holo used to talk about colleagues. He never said he has taxi drivers. He would always refer to them as colleagues, even though he was their boss. And I would like to call on to Mr. Marujo. Uh, after you, Mr. Marujo, will be Mr. Galani. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, this is the last day we have to dance for a mic. Don't just, can we shake, please? Just any other song, please. Just better. Hari Jai Fing, Hari Jai Fing. I don't think we have we have to celebrate guys. Definitely. No, come on, but it's okay. Dumela. Good morning. Remuruti. Okay. All right. Nike Uli Hila Marujo. Hey, the language is changing now, eh? My name is Kelvin Marohua. I'm representing the taxi industry. I'm representing the taxi industry, which I believe people say the image has been dented, but look at us. It's through a mic. Or a bill more thing. Gradually, it's difficult. It's a process where you're supposed to engage Run up to what it takes, so it's not a good thing. Hey, come on to a taxi. I'll explain the other day. We are. This area I'm familiar with. I used to play for Hungry Lions, those who know those years. Anyway, I'm not there. Mobutsi Long. Bamutu. Bonali di kala. Tedi farolo kani. Hey, maruho wainyano. Di kala means stages. I'll interpret differently now. O Mike has written then and everybody 85 paragraphs. 85 paragraphs? I will only mention two, and the rest is for family library to sit around it. The first paragraph that I know that he has written, he was a hard worker. We have experienced that. The second one, ever smiling. The remaining three, it's for you, family, to sit down, little holo, do long hearts, sit down and connect the dots about, and I believe then I'll get the report of the 83 and the family. It's not an, it's not an instruction, but it's an indirect plea. Please, Kia Kopa. Oh, Mike, Papa Mike was what you call Baba Itin Sokoa, little Antusa. He was what you call octogenarian. 
Somebody spoke, if not then, was spoke about 95 years. I'm talking about somebody who's from 80 to 89. Ukraine, yeah, the bonus students, 85 plus, plus, plus. He was just about to graduate to Nino, to become a Nino Dizurian. Go and Google, you'll see that. But let me step up from there. I decided, as I said, I'm a deputy chair of Batwadi Taxi, Greater Bluefontein, to pen down something for that they might go away the whole day, but let me not do that. Then did that, and my baby girl here. I'll run it quickly, Muruti, I won't waste time. Today is not a good day. Today, we have gathered here to pay the last respect to one of us. We have gathered here to say bye-bye to our Mike, who played a very important role, very vital role in many people's lives. I hope we agree. That's why we are here. I'm, take, I'm talking about one, a motivator, Two, a hard worker. Three, peacemaker and peacekeeper. And peacekeeper. Even in this situation, Apostolic Paul taught us and encouraged us to rejoice, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. La Dumel. La Dumel. That's why you have to dance. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, God knew that, I'm not preaching, but this is the day that God said, That is why when even circumstances, we will say, it is well with my soul, that is well, let's say seal. Good people, we have lived with um, Mike. We saw his role in our industry. Then spoke about uh, piracy. It's true. We start, we start, I used to walk up at two o'clock Elmo Station for those who are in Bloomfontein, taking the first. You catch the first? I'll finish off the other day. We saw his impact in his industry. He paved a way for many people, but we know that all these did not come easy. Hard work, hard work, hard work. Because being, a, being in a leadership role is not easy. Being in, in a leadership comes with trial and tribulations. Being a leader can make or break. For the sake of Muruti or Ore. Because you have deal with different characters with different energies. But if you are depending on God, you don't, you don't have to worry because he, he will protect you against all odds. Oh, Mike is an example that God never leave nor forsake his people. To you, family, God will stand before you God will wipe your tears away. Even in this period of sadness, God will bring you joy. Because he is the almighty God. I'm here to give you reassurance that it will be fine. God is watching you. Jerem would not that you are not going to quench or restrain in spirit. I want to believe now is the time to rethink your relationship with God. I'm not preaching still. To the family, friends and colleagues, be comforted unto the Lord as he is the one who gave and he is the one who has taken away. Blessed be the same. Amen.
ya leboga ntate kalani ha re tlodisha pantate o batla pina ka botla dibetse melang a ke qale ka o leboa motsamaisi wa mosebetsi ke leboe ba ruti ke leboe phuthewe kopane monana ke ra modimo wa khotswa letse antle e batho ba isu e ke mona tsa tsine na ke tlwaemela di driver sa ntate de Mike Fesen nere mmitsa o Mike eh ke ka dilo se bile tsanda te Mike 2005 till today eh ho bile thata le tonla o ganela ntate te Mike ke ne ke tsama ke na le metheu mepa o nyolosa o theu mare ke rata hore o mmemegi omden Eric Obri Joyce Kaela Joanne Kila Kaleboa Halile la mphamunyetla o sebelitsa ntate Mike Eric ble le batho ba mona hore ntate Mike na le I still remember ka 2009 ka Easter ke qabana le ntate Mike ke le ga ha e ka tlung ke le ha ha e ka tlung ke tshwantse ke be ofo ka satarata ntate maike re nong ke se be ofo satarata ke re ntate maike o ntle go ntse e kutlo marontso reng a re mona ke re ke haka mona o ofisa satarata ke re nong ntate maike ha ke na kolo ya pele ke fitla ne nnyi timbe ke Yesu bana ba o ke bana ba tletse ka tlo nna ke fitla ne nnyi Yesu ya ba Jay and Joe le nna ka tlo a o joetse atla a ngula re tlo tsamawe ya o tsamawe ya hai o khawane le papa ke tla bua le a ke be ke tswa ke tsamae ha ke fitla o nna ntlong ke dutsi ke dutsi phone ya le maike ke ha e be ntato ba tlang hape ke bella kwa na ke etlwela eh ke ne ke le ke ne ke so nyala ne ke le process nya le nyala ya lapi ke a sheba no mme no wa ntsheba a re araba phone ke ha le ke ntato na ro maka ke kharebe ya o ke re ha e le ka nga ke a araba ke re tate maike a ro ke sa ni sheba mshanya na ka tswa o re fela tanki ka bana wa ka ba o rata tswa o se ka atla tswa sane o se ka tlotsu tle le na ke o rata sane o tle ka la bobedi o tswa ke re tanki nta te maike ke a lebo wa wa then eh ke se beditse le la pele rata nthuto batho ba Yesu eh i like to say thanks to civilians and te maike le thudentse ke mo sebeletsa you know how khana taxi o le taxi driver batho ba tlo nyatsa people ba tlo nka ba o sheba fela ba rawa ruteya I like to say thanks to Sibeli Tanda Temaiki, thanks to Sibeli Tanda Banda Banda Temaiki. Kileka ya skulu ng university. Husna manga tiba. Meme gula papa magi mwonsa di Steve Yeti za gata university za Yofs. Kire ntseke stadi ya li Yofs. Arkana kwe fin kire ntseke siya kumbike bali ya kia Yofs. Today, na watu wa isuki mu enkye kerken Afrika di nerdeise kefurumende kerken Afrika. Uh, today, Kenali diploma is theology. I'm still studying. Next year, I'm starting degree in theology. Uh, next year, unfortunately, I'm going to be able to do it. 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 Unfortunately, I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be o tla e bona o dinishin ya ka lastly memegi omden obri eric joyce kaela le tlo fumana ba khotsi ba batsha memegi o tlo fumana ba khotsi ba batsha o tlo fumana dikholo tse ngata tse to tlagtela ka nna zanele hona le batho bane I used to say when I'm preaching, 
bona le bathwana bo ba utlwang ha batla o ba utlwa ka di full steps gore batla eh even le president ha ka to feta nomo re tlo utlwa ka di kolo re batla ba te memeki bathwao they will come om den o tlo fumana kholo tse tlo blela ka nna hore lele ka moshimane yeo because of lanan tsa phila o no tlo mike lele ka glasgow lele ka glasgow o sile o o o o convince the driver ke ne ke ntsilentswe le le lengwe yena ka re nka tlo convince banna ba ba holotse ka o fela ha o sona hana banna bana bana le malapa ka o fela ba ba tlo convincewa ke nne di tlo fitla memegi ba lo kena amta ha o ka tlung ba no ateka bitso laka mar i know that or modimo ke morapelang he will fight for me ke tla tlwela nta te mike ka o rata haka e seng ka o rata a mothimo a tla lo nwa tie ka le bitso laka ba tlo le jwetsa bana ba ntate mai gore Glasgow this and this and that and ba ne ba le teng ke ba tse ba ba e bua mehlaeng ha ke ba tlui so ke a ikopela gore o lona ke tlo o tswa ntate mai ke ha nna ke batla ke a le bua mtsamiso msebetsi thank you thank you Glasgow Glasgow o nke di nomoro tsa ka ke tla o buelela leni eh ke mothatingwa o ketela may i ask all the grandchildren and great grandchildren to come to the front one of you would like to speak so i think it's an opportunity o re letle letle um anti joyce baitseba ake okay wa bon ta te molona le team e ngata re ka etsa bakhani ya yengwe hape ona tshi Um, good day to everyone gathered here. I'd like to take this opportunity and thank you guys for, for coming and supporting me and my family as we bury our legend. My grandfather was a forever smiling person and a fun person to be around. He was also talkative as well. And as much as he loved talking, you, you have to listen to him as he speaks. His life stories were my life lessons. He taught me never to underestimate people. He taught me not to judge people. He taught me to every time I came to Asokola, instead of to judge, I came to say. It's unfortunate. For a little girl, a mom, I was able to take such a little girl born. I would have loved him to see me graduate. But then it's okay. Get a motabi sans a little hoodie more. Papa, above everything, sorry, it's a decent honor as the grandchildren. Tao. Kebata Otse Behori. Rito Dula Rotabis. Into Engle Ungutilenona, M. Billy Enke. I'm going to use that as my life lesson. I'm going to use that as my weapon to overcome each and every obstacle. Raurata pap. Moya wa hao, hao ro baleka khotse. Um I didn't 
repair anything, but I'd just like to say thank you, Upa Mike. Um, I was, like now, I was a very um, emotional baby. <laughs> um, Auntie Maggie and Opa Mike welcomed me into their home, always, constantly, even with everything. And I'd just like to say thank you, Opa Mike. Um, thank you for the um, money you used to give, and <laughs> you could always do it. Thank you just for being an amazing grandfather. Um, I just want to say, and also, um, hearing your stories, um, and when I, um, actually last um, December, I think it was last December for Christmas, um, we went through the photo albums and I was looking at all your pictures and it was just so amazing getting to see, you know, your life. And also now hearing the stories um, and the lives that you've lived and how hard you worked, um, it's something that I'd like to take with me, so um, thank you, Opa Mike, thank you. <laughs> Where do I begin? I was, I am the third grandchild of Michael. And you know, I always used to look forward to going to my grandfather. It was like, it was home. Papa was home. I remember when I came to my grandfather and I was still expecting my son and I was so scared. I was shivering. And I remember him saying that my son is a blessing and I shouldn't take it as a mistake because maybe he came to protect me from something. Who knows? I went back home I sat and I was like, hey, what am I going to name my son? And then I thought, okay, at that time I had two grandfathers left. And I was like, okay, he's a boy. So let me, let me give him my grandfather's names. And that's when I sat and I was like, Michael. Yes. Because they say um, the person who you give your child the name it carries a meaning. And because my grandfather was this ambitious, strong, motivating, hardworking, he was just the, everything. I, I, I knew that that name suited my son. And I could say thank you to Auntie Maggie. Auntie Maggie never made me feel like I'm not her own grandchild. She always treated me equal. And I love you for that, Auntie Maggie. And thank you, Auntie Mickey, that you looked after Papa for us. Thank you. We are forever grateful for you, Auntie Mickey, because you were Papa's angel. You were sent to him. You are a blessing. You were a blessing to him, and you are a blessing to us, though. Thank you, Auntie Megs. Thank you, everyone. Standing here today is actually quite hard because I never thought that this day would come where I'd have to say goodbye to my only grandparents. I held Opa so close to my heart and I had so many memories of him, specifically when I'd go to his house and I'd go and open the fridge and my mother would yell at me to not open it because it's not my house. And he'd come out of his room yelling at my mother, no, it's also her house. She can do what she wants in this house. We'd play games together. We'd laugh together. 
and just to think that he won't see me getting married, getting to graduate, my metric dance is quite hard. Opa, I hope you rest in everlasting peace. May you reunite with those in heaven that are waiting for you. And I just hope that you are happy where you are now. I'll see you one day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please go make your granddaddy proud. And that Chulo saying Hore. There's an angel called Michael. He will be fighting for you and for everyone else. So please go make him proud. We are done with the program. I would like to hand over to the church. Um, Father, the place is now.
Listen to our first scripture reading is from Job, chapter 42, reading from verse 1 to 6. I know, Lord, that you are all-powerful, that you can do everything you want. You ask how I dare question your wisdom when I am so very ignorant. I talked about things I did not understand, about marvels too great for me to know. You told me to listen while you spoke and to try to answer your questions. In the past, I knew only what others had told me, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. So I am ashamed of all I have said and repent in dust and ashes. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. He spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup will be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the book of Revelations 22, and we read from verse 7 to 14, the book of Revelations, chapter 22. Listen, says Jesus, I am coming soon. Happy are those who obey the prophetic word in this book. I, John, have heard and seen all these things. And when I finished hearing and seeing them, I fell down at the feet of the angel who had shown me these things, and I was about to worship him. But he said to me, Don't do it. I am a fellow servant of yours and of your brothers, the prophets, and all those who obey the work in this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not keep the prophetic word of this book a secret, because the time is near when all this will happen. Whoever is evil must go on doing evil, and whoever is filthy must go on being filthy. Whoever is good must go on doing good, and whoever is holy must go on being holy. Listen, says Jesus, I am coming soon. I will bring my reward with me to give to each one according to what he has done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Happy are those who wash their robes clean and so have the right to eat the fruit from the tree of life and to go through the gates into the city. Amen. Amen. Can we stand for the gradual hymn? Can we please stand? Be still. Thank you. 
before we start, can I just ask there's a request that a vehicle appear with a registration number KM72ZH. Uh, GP must just remove the vehicle. It's, um, it's in the way. The Lord be with you. Listen to the good news proclaiming the gospel of Saint John, chapter fourteen, reading from the twenty-third verse. Glory to be Christ, our Savior. Can I just ask, when the gospel is read, that everybody stand, please. Jesus answered and said to them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and I will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word you hear is not mine, but the Father, but the Father who sent me. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I've said to you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to my father for my Father is greater than I am. And now I have told you before, it comes that when it comes, when it does come to pass, that you may believe. This is the gospel of Christ. Father of mercy and God of great comfort, we are in deep mourning. We are saddened, Lord Heavenly Father. Where shall our help come from, Lord God? Our help comes from the Lord who has created heavens and the earth. We seek your face, Lord Heavenly Father, so that we can receive salvation and righteousness. We come before you, Lord Heavenly Father, and we ask you, Lord Heavenly Father, for your restoration within us. We ask you to embrace each and every one here, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord Heavenly Father, to uplift them and strengthen them. We come unto you, Lord Heavenly Father, because we know, Lord Heavenly Father, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Come also unto you, Lord Heavenly Father, and we ask you, Lord God, let your word may be here, heard here this morning, Lord God. And we thank you for the blessed life of Mike McPherson. We thank you, Lord Heavenly Father, for the gracious father, grandfather, colleague, husband that he was, Lord God, and thank you for the contribution that he has made in this world. We ask you, Lord Heavenly Father, now to come draw closer to us, Lord God, so that we may hear your word and that your word may set us free. Also remind myself, Lord Heavenly Father, that your word was not never ever about me, Lord God, but it was for your kingdom. So I ask you now, Lord Heavenly Father, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my God, and my Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I greet each and every one in a wonderful and the blessed name of our dear Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I trust that you well. I know your, your hearts are troubled. I want to say to the family, Maggie and Dan, Aubrey, Joyce, Eric, Michaela, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, I want to say to the colleagues, the community, 
Everybody that he made an impact in your life, and that is why you are here this morning. He's made a great impact in your life. And um, obviously, you are not also here because you are an atheist. You are here because you believe in the word of God. And this is the house of the Lord. And as my brother uh, said previously, that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. And I can say this morning from 2 Corinthians 1, it says, Blessed are the God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of the mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforts all of us in our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble. But listen what James 4 verse 7 says. James 4 verse 7 says the following, Therefore, submit to God, family. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near closer to God and he will draw closer to you in all circumstances. I don't know what words I can say here this morning. Everything was said from the family. I can just briefly say from... from from what was said uh, that oh, Mike loved me, he protected me, he was my provider, he taught me, he tried, he, he showed me how to, f to defend myself. He was a firm believer of never giving up. He said sometimes when he struggled, he used to say that this is part of life, this shall also be overcome. Michaela said that she drew wisdom from him and he made her felt like how a woman should be loved how a man should love a daughter and how a husband should love a wife. There's a dedication of what's a true father and uh, 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 for what he stood. He was committed in raising his children. We heard that what Joy said. Uh, he was a sanctuary of hope. He was uh, dedicated. He showed resilience in, in what he did. And he had a, he had a great work ethic. And, and when I say work ethic, sometimes we... we, we um, we must be very careful when we say we've got work ethic, we've got church ethic, we've got, we got family ethics. Ethics remain ethics. It depends on how you represent yourself in the situation. And it says that he was driven by love, and we heard that. I can also recall that in, in one sentence. The church once, the church of God, well, God actually went through a struggle in this church financially. I'm not going to say the church because the church belongs to God. And... Um, I don't know how he heard and he called me once um, and uh, as I said, he said to me, I believe you, you, you need money and I said, no, God needs money. God needs money and, and God needs to extend his kingdom in the, in the, in the parish of St. Philip's and without even a doubt and that's what I can say that I, how I actually reconnected or connected with, with Omike. So he took, um, Danielle actually told me that, you know, he, he took some Five minutes, he made sure. I know that he also, he was very fond of his work, but he made sure that he spent five minutes with his, with his, with his uh, granddaughters. You know, he was one of those uh, grandfathers. We wouldn't do, in our haste of building our own empires, you know, as parents, we don't get to our children enough time to spend with them. And Mike was one of those people, you know, when the grandchildren comes along, they even can make a fire in the house, and he would say, leave the fire, the fire is beautiful. And you wouldn't do that. We don't do that for our children because, you know, um, we don't have, we don't spend much time with our children. He was even their personal chauffeur in, in the things that he did for them. You can see what a type of person that he was. He was a contributor, you know, and he was a, he set the example of, of, of being an enormous factor in, the, in, this, in, in his family. And we are saddened in this devastating blow. And I want to tell the family, as believers of Christ, that when we serve God, you know, it's a heavy burden to carry that cross. Whether your cross is 10 centimeters or 2 kilometers long, you know, you're going to need help in these moments. In these moments, you're going to need help. Jesus needed help. He, he, he was a person that needed help. And I want to tell you while he was, why I say so. When you go to Luke 23, verses 26, he was struggling to carry that cross. And you, you know, what I actually wanted to say is we cannot, we cannot, you know, fight the devil and his companions on our own. And, and in Luke 23 verses 26, it says the following, Now he was led away. They laid hold of a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it with Jesus Christ. We cannot run this race on our own. We come into this world with nothing. We go out of this world with nothing. Whatever you do in between your birth and your death is all a choice that each and every one of us makes. 
And the word of God is sometimes harsh. Sometimes we call the word of God, it's contradicting. It depends on how you relate to the word of God. And in saying so, um, when, we, when, when the family, I want to say to, to the, every, each and every one of you here this morning, when your cross become heavy, God will carry that cross with you, with you, and he will make you free from that, your, your, your trials. He will never abandon you. That is why Jesus Christ says, I will come back and I will never leave you orphans. I will never leave you orphans. And the cross is where true ministry happens. Not speaking from the pulpit about how you should dress. It comes from the word of God. It's not about how you should be married. It comes from the word of God. And if you do not know the word of God, then you are lost. That is why he says, there will be preachers that will come in false sheep, like false sheep, and spread the word of God. But God says, I will give you shepherds that's true to my own heart. And the thing is, the majority of, of us will go through the same ordeal every time, week after week, year after year. All of us will die. The reality is that we do not want to face that reality. But the time that we spend here, the short time, imagine the long time that you will spend in eternity. Let that sink in for a minute. The best character like on Mike, he was a very humble person. Very humble person. I even, when you look at this, that, that Toyota that he, that he drove was full of dents. He didn't go buy a Mercedes or a ML or whatever the situation may be. He was a humble person. And he remained humble. And in saying so, he set the example of a true husband, a father, and a grandfather, and a community leader. He might not have a, a stature in the community, you know, with a title. But people looked up to him with utmost respect. And in saying so, also, you see, what matters most to him was his children. And his characteristic, characteristics, as what we heard in the obituary, was that right from the beginning, um, James said it the other day, on Wednesday night, he met um, 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 Mike in a church. He went to a school where the word of God was profoundly discussed among them. And here we sit this morning. And I want to tell you, each and every parent here this morning, Signing up to become a parent is a total commitment. It's not something like playing Monopoly, getting into jail, and getting a jail to get a free card out of jail. You committed to parenthood forever. Sometimes, yes, we do have struggles. Sometimes we do have pain. But God says, come unto me when you need rest, and I will give you rest. I will help you going through this thing. It doesn't matter what anybody else tells you. They come with their lies because the devil, the John 10 verse says, I did not, I, I, I came to come and save you. I am the good shepherd. The ones that came before me only came to come and steal and lie and tell you the things that are not true. I come to give you peace. A peace that surpasses your understanding. That is why he says in Proverbs, do not trust on men. Do not trust on what they say to you. You do not understand that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Can you comprehend those words? I am the way, the truth, and the life to my father. He says in John 14, I and my father is one. If we abide in him, my father will come and we will set up a home with you and honor you. Think about that. God honors you. And he's saying so. The anxiety of death, it creates this entire vacuum within us that you feel that you are in isolation. You're feeling that you are hopeless. You're feeling that you are lost like a sheep. But God says, I will go through deep waters to search for you. I will leave the 99 behind. And I will make you to come to me. This God that we, I know you are still in shock. Your systems are down. And you are, you are feeling that, you know, the denial of this reality is bringing more shock and more pain and more doubt in your minds. Time will heal and mend these wounds, but it doesn't will heal them. It doesn't just only heal them, but it will give you the experience that you are going through. People say, I want to, my father left the legacy. The president left a legacy. I want to tell your parents, if you want a legacy, leave a legacy to your children about Jesus Christ. 
I want to tell you that, that, you know, don't be impressed. Because I always say this. This church knows this. I say this so many times. If God builds a church, the devil builds a chapel next to it. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? Don't be impressed when people quote scriptures. The devil can also quote scriptures. Listen to what he says to Jesus Christ. Matthew 4. He says to Matthew 4. He says, Then the devil took him up onto the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And the devil said to him, If you are the son of God, Jesus Christ, throw yourself down here, for it is written, the devil quote the following, He shall give you angels charge over you, in his hands they shall bear you up, lest you your dash your foot against the stone. Where did he get that quote from? Psalm 91, verses 11. He says unto him, For ye shall give his angels, this is Psalm 91, verses 11, For ye shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. So don't just trust anything when you're going through trials. Go unto the Lord that will save you. Go unto the Lord. He is a true example. Yes, death is cold. Death is unconvincing. This is sometimes when you went to that, to that house earlier. Oh, Mike even lost his identity. They don't even say to him, bring your mic here anymore. Bring the coffin here. <laughs> they say, you know what? They don't recall him anymore. That is how cold death is. But our Lord Jesus Christ overcame death for our sin. He was the victory that he even asked. Paul says, oh, death, where is your sting? You know, it's like somebody that's working out. You need, to, you need to build on, you know, it's like somebody going through university, university. You, you go to your degrees and you go to your honors, you know, it's, it's things that you build on to equip yourself. But people don't equip themselves when it comes to these things. It's like somebody that works out. If you want to work on a specific muscle, you do some specific training. But the thing is, how do we, uh, how are we spiritually becoming in shape if we only come to church on a Sunday or in funerals or in weddings or confirmations or baptisms for that make? The thing is, for a while that we are in this flesh, this flesh is going to vanish at some stage. And then Paul, James describes it, he says this in, in James 4 verses 14, he says the following, he says the following, he says, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? Even if a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. I think in, in, in essence, I'm saying this the following to you. I'm saying the following to do. Each and every one that's supporting you, this family, imagine God uses you today to encourage somebody. Imagine how you lasted from January to October in the blessings of God. You could have been in that coffin. Imagine. Imagine. The, but some of us do not want to make, you know, peace with the fact that God is in control of the situation. It, it becomes sometimes intense. Our, our bodies become, you know, weary. But God says that if you need salvation, look at the cross of, of, of Calvary. Look at the cross where my son Jesus Christ has died. And in saying so, funerals, week after week, has got a different storyline, a, a different narrative. Those storylines, they become with trauma, they come with pain, they come with suffering, they come with a total different title. It's like somebody, like a sequel, you know, Rotten Tomatoes give you a grading for that film. You cannot give a grading to a funeral. My mom used to have a dressing table years ago, fucking 40 years ago, in her house, and she would, she would gather these things up and say to, you know, this was auntie, this funeral, this was, and I'll ask, why did my mom do these things? Because these things vanish. We got to hold family close to us. If you have never built on your relationship with your family, it's the time like this that's an eye-opener for you. You see, when I say a sequel, it's not like a Rocky 1, Rocky 2, or, 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 or a Sylvester Stallone, or an Arnold Schwarzenegger that says, I'll be back. You know, death will come back. We will be here. We will see a tent on another, on another, in another, in another home. The thing is, death affects our entire spiritual beings. 
It, so, so to, to such an extent, you know, we find ourselves in this paradox of contradiction. You know, that the, the God, you know, he tells us, be, be worried about those that come at you like a thief at the night. And we just want to come in to destroy things. You see, it's like gamers. You know, guys, these guys that play games online, my kids don't even ask me, 24 hours. They play online games. They create an avatar. That avatar means it is not them. Because when we are here on this earth, we don't belong to this. The, the Bible tells us that while we are in the flesh, we are away from God. And the only way that we can make, make, make peace with the fact that we can come closer to God is when he says, draw closer to me. In saying so, in saying so, I want to say this to you. You've got to understand that Martha and Mary went through in their times with, with the passing of Lazarus. Now, I'm going to quickly go there. I just want to quickly go there to Martha and Mary. Now, before I go there, I want to say this the following to you. When we look at the three steps of the laws of attraction, the laws of attraction and how you, you, you change the outcome of it, the three things that it is this is, is, to, is to, to, to ask, believe, and to receive. Ask, believe, and receive. What does Jesus Christ say to him? He says that whenever you, everything that you ask in my name, you'll receive it. Knock on the door. You know, he, he calls it. Now listen to Martha and Mary. They say to Jesus Christ, and briefly, I'm just going to briefly go. He says, Father, if you were here, my, father, my brother would not have died. Immediately, he tells us that we can do nothing without Jesus Christ. But he says, you know, that we need to ask him for help. Then he says to her, he says to, 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 to Martha, he says to Martha, Martha, do you believe? She says, yes, I believe in the last day of the resurrection. He says, no, while I am with you, do you believe this, Martha? And then the receiving part came. Jesus wept because he saw them like us today, how we lack compassion. And he saw them that we were, with, we were like sheep without the shepherd. And then he looked at them. He says, he says, you know, Lazarus come out after four days. That was the steps of the laws of attraction. Asking, they got what they asked. Believing that he was going to be risen and then they received their brother back after four days. Jesus Christ wants to tell us, if you want to avoid being the fact that, that, listen what he says. Listen what he says in Revelations. He says, Revelations 2, he says the following. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, to teach and seduce my servants. I have asked her to repent, but she did not want to repent. Let's go quickly to Luke 13. He says, Luke 13 verses 1, he says the following. He says, he says the following. He says, I'm going to give you a one year. Here we go. He says, I tell you, but unless you repent, unless Jesus Christ echo this, unless you repent, likewise you will, you, you will perish. Or, you know, he says unto you, and I will give you one more year. If you do not, if you do not outgrow yourself, you do not bear fruit, then I will cut you off. What does John 3 verse 16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will never perish and he will give them eternal life. He will not cut you off. Tell the, the, the family this morning. You see, there will be storms without God and those storms will break you. Storms with God will build you, family. Storms with God in this, in, 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 in saying so, God is always going to take care of you. He's going to, um, like, um, Mike, live a full life circle. And, and, and what do I say? So we've got three stages of our lives. The one that you're currently in, the eternal one, and the one that you spend in your, in your mother's womb for nine months. They call it the prenatal uh, 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 life. So whatever we do here is up to us. Whatever we do here is what we're going to decide. What are we going to do with it? You see, oh, Mike was a good father. He was a good father in such a sense that, the, that the, we, we can call him love. We all got our imperfection and we can always start sometimes because, you know, you can do a hundred things right, 99 things right, and it will please the entire world. Do one thing wrong. 
<laughs> and you will be judged on it forever. Do one thing wrong. And in saying so, I want to tell to the family, Dan, Aubrey, and, and everybody else, the blessing is on our children because of fathers and mothers. I want to let you sing that in for one second quickly. When I go there, I want to go to 2 Samuel 7 verses 12. It says the following. 2 Samuel verses 12 says the following. He says this to David. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seat after you, your children, who will come from your body and, they will, and I will establish their kingdom. Well, listen to what God says. I will establish your kingdom, Dan, Joyce. I will establish your kingdom. But there's something that he says in Deuteronomy. Honor your father and honor your mother. He says, he shall build a house for, for, for my name. He shall build a house for my name. And I will establish a throne for his kingdom forever. And I will be their father and he shall be my son. And if they commit iniquity and will be chastened him from the rod of men, and they will blows of the, of the sons of men. But listen what he says in 1 King 2 verses 1. 1 King 2 verses 1 he says, now the days of David draw near that he should die. And he, and, and he charged his son Solomon saying, I go the way of the earth, by, be strong forever. P find and, and, and prove yourself as a man. And keep charge of the Lord your God. And, work in the, and, sorry, and walk in the, his ways and keep his commandments, his judgments and his testimonies. And it is written in the law just as it was done for your father. What did he do with Solomon? Solomon comes. Solomon, Solomon st st start praying. Solomon says, God, I cannot do, deal with these people anymore. I cannot deal with death anymore. I cannot deal with the after effects of Saturday and Sunday after these people are gone. God, I cannot deal with the fact that I am feeling isolated. God, I cannot deal with this thing that I am all about myself now, Lord God. Where are you, Lord God? Do you know where God is when we distance ourselves from him? The fact is that when we distance ourselves from him, it is because our principalities change, our destinies change, our friends change, and we distance ourselves from the word of God. It's not because God is not close to you. It's because we have changed. Mikai, M M M Micah says, I am the God that never changes. We change. Then we say, God, why does this happen to my family? It's because your, your testimony is changed. You no longer give him the praises. You no longer give him the honor. And in saying so, Why do I say so? You see, we, we, we keep ourselves sometimes. Look what Luke 16 verses says about the rich man and Lazarus. Now, w when I listened to one of, I cannot call who it was, who said that, and, I, and it, this, script, this scripture came to, my, to mind. And it says, the rich man and Lazarus, there's one way ticket out. There's, there's, there's two things that you cannot dodge here in this world. In this world. Death and taxes. You cannot dodge them. You're going to pay your taxes. And you, you, you're going to die. And the rich man thought that forever he's going to live. And then he didn't want to give Lazarus the crumbs that, was on his, on, that, that fell from his table. And he says, that's, that's what all. And this is what the rich man says. He says, I beg from you there, for father, that you would send to my father's house. For I have five brothers that may testify for them. There's, sorry. Least that they may also come to this place of torment because he found himself in hell. He found himself in hell. He says, I don't want my brothers to come here. And Abraham said to them, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear from them. And he said, no, father, Abraham, but if it, if it goes on from this death, they will, they will never repent. It means that we clutch or we, 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 we keep hold of things that, doesn't, that should not change us. You see, the thing is, David was obedient to the extent that God blessed him and his children. God does not punish your children because of your father's sins. Each and every one of us has an obligation to God, to community of who we are. Coming back to that thing, that word again, ethics. And the thing is, the enemy wants to destroy us sometimes. But we are not accountable for learning from, we are not accountable for not learning from our parents. We are accountable, sorry, from learning from our parents' mistake. This is what God did, Jesus Christ. He goes to Peter. He says, Peter, Peter, who do you say I am? 
He says, I'm the son of... He says, Peter, he said, what do the people say, sorry, who, who I am? And then he says, Peter, he questions Peter face to face. Who do you say I am? Then he says, I am the son of God. What did he do when they wanted to arrest Jesus Christ? He says, no, I will not allow this. And then he cut off the soldier's ear. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. He was once an angel, then Peter became a devil. Peter was all of, obviously, he was a solid drop, and then he lost everything. The thing is what I want to say to this. This is my storyline. In these moments, you've got to be watchful who comes to you. God comes to you, and he sends somebody out of good faith. The devil comes to you to make you make trouble. You need to discern what to listen to. And in saying so, I'm going to close here. Je Jesus Christ has broken the grave. Do you want to be stuck in that grave forever because Jesus made it known that he will rise after three days? And he did rise. He was no longer in there. You see, sometimes we need to look at something differently. You see, if you've got no God, you don't have peace. If you've got no N-O God, you've got no peace. But if you know God, then you have peace. There's two different ways of how we look at the scriptures of the Bible. And the Jesus understanding that we, 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 we need through our su suffering. It's sometimes it, it's different. It's not like these teenagers sometimes. They got the faith and when they think they got the faith, they can get the woman. You need to speak out. You need to speak. It's not the faith that will get it. It's not the scriptures that will get you into heaven. But it's what we do with the scriptures. I'm going to close off now. You see, we're going to be always going to be worried about the next chapter. And I know that, uh, your, that the family is going, this is your season of pain. And, and, and your p season of pain will continue maybe for such a long time as long as you allow that pain. The Lord says, I didn't come to come and change. The Lord says, so, I, I don't want to come change the Lord. That's what Jesus Christ says. But I come to come and bring everything unto men. God is not about evolution. God is not about inconsistency. God is a God that loves us. Now I want to I close totally off now. By doing the following. Oh, my, he was a gentle heart, kind-hearted person. And he was somebody that laid down his life for his family, like Jesus Christ. Now I want to quickly use an example quickly here. I know you've spent a lot of money on this funeral. I'm talking about your clothes. I'm not talking about the coffin. <laughs> I'm, I can see you. Those, those ladies that's got those heels with a with red undercoat, I know what those shoes cost. I know what they cost. <laughs> so you have a Galatians. We know this about the, the, the fruit of the spirit. Here we go. We can only say, you know, assume what everyone's hairstyle costs here and your things cost. It costs money, a lot of money. And I said it with a lot of respect on you. What I want to say to you is all the money can buy this coffin and all the things that you have here today, your houses and whatever the situation may be. But it cannot bring your mind back. That money cannot bring him back. The thing is, what I wanted to say to you, in retrospect, say, if you take a glass of water and you take and you take sugar and you put it in your hands, you will see this sugar before you throw it in the water. And it's two things that you see for yourself. But when it lands in the water, you don't see it dissolves. You got doubt if the if the if the sugar is in there because you don't see it. What do you do? You taste it. Jesus Christ says that I can only remain in you if you come to me and you start believing. Jesus Christ says that I can only uphold you if you make yourself humble to me, submit to them, you know, like resist the devil and say to me, here I am, I need you and I can uphold you. For now you might think because 10 years from now you might not, you know, comprehend the situation that you were in this thing and I spoke about it or some other, you know, preachers spoke about this. But Jesus Christ says that we need to come to him. That is what he did with his disciples. His disciples says, show us the Father. He says, we don't understand what you're doing. Explain the parables to us. Then he says to them, after the death, wait for me in Jerusalem until I bring my Holy Spirit. What did happen when they received the Holy Spirit? In, in Acts 2 verses 38, Peter, who was the most stubborn uh, uh, disciple, on that specific day, he made two, three thousand people to repent. That is what the Holy Spirit does to in us. And our life like this person, when we say Galatians 5, it says, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. He says, he had joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, 
gentleness, faithfulness, you know, self-control against these things, there are no laws. What does it say about this? It says love. If we've got love, we cover a multitude of sin. Because there's nothing against love. And there's nothing against Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say this to you. That when God said to Moses, Moses says to him, who are you? I need to tell my people. He says to him, I am the God of Jacob, Abraham, and Isaac. That made sense to Moses. All over now, there's a connection. Now you would ask yourself, the people that's carrying here the coffin, the people that are here, aren't they related? Aren't they friends? Aren't they friends in Christ Jesus? Shouldn't we be more like the fruit of the Spirit towards them? Shouldn't we as family be worried that we do not fall apart in moments like these? And in moments like these, when a big tree like this falls, sometimes, family, you lose your identity. Because when a tree like that falls, the, the, you find yourself that the roots are no longer, you think the roots are no longer there. Like the sugar in the water. But the roots are there because the roots are planted within you. It's for you to recognize that the roots are with you. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Christ Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <coughs> together our Father, once a Father, any language appropriate. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of crime and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us commend our brother Michael to the mercy of God our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power you gave his life, and to the love you would have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust the body of our Mike McPherson to your merciful keeping, in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever and ever. Amen. We now just going to ask for the closure. Yeah, the closure of um, the what's happening next, where we're going to, and um, you know, the cemetery and, and everything after that. But thanks. Please play us the slideshow.
lived a very happy life, as you can see. Um, also, everyone in the family wanted to be close to him, from the children, great children and great grandchildren, everyone, friends and family. The McPherson family would like to thank everyone of you for coming um, to celebrate the life of our father. Indeed, he's been a great man. Um, our family can't express how much your generosity has meant to us during this difficult time. We really thank you, and we hope all this that you are doing, let I fit this at Hobabang. The McPherson family yale boa hape. Straight to the graveyard. From the graveyard, graveyard, we will go to Norman. Can some? Aha! For lunch. Yes. Uncle Aubrey, may you please blow off the candle? Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left for us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, both the evil we have done and the good we have not done, and strengthen us to follow in the steps of your Son, in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God in his infinite love and mercy Bring the whole church, loving and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of his eternal kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
creation and maker of all, and we are mortal, forms of the earth, and to the earth we shall return, as we ordained when we created us, saying, Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. We all go down to the dust, and weeping at the grave, we make ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, by his burial, sanctify the grave to be a bed of hope, of hope for your people. Bless this grave that it may be a resting place, peaceful and secure, for the body of your servant, O Mike McPherson, for the sake of him who died and was raised and is alive forevermore. Amen. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those that fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust, the days of man are but as grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place will know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever and ever toward those that fear him and his righteousness is upon their children. to the Lord's most gracious mercy and protection. We have, in, we have entrusted our dear brother on Mike McPherson, and we now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead to die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for it is that follow him. God will show us the path of life. In his presence is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand there is pleasure forevermore. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. family to pay their last respect to a mic. Can we have a hymn to support and carry the family?
risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Let us Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of the living and the dead, we worship and adore you. We give you thanks for calling us into the communion of saints. We remember before you your servant, or Mike McPherson, who, like us, was baptized into, his, into the death and the resurrection of your son. Bring us all through death to life by the merits of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In loving memory of Michael McPherson, Six February nine, sunrise. Six February nineteen thirty-eight, sunset. Thirty September twenty twenty-three. A devoted husband, loving father, and adoring grandfather and great grandfather, De deeply missed forever in our hearts. In the name of our of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we dedicate this stone to the memory of Mike McPherson. Amen. Amen. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that nothing can separate us from the love of, of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who died and rose again. Awake or asleep, we may live with him. Keep us in the love and in the sure hope of the resurrection of the death through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, by, uh, called you, and he will not fail you. Let us just now receive the grace. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen.